we need to do more work in this area. Well, I move quickly to the next uh, dimension. We have a fourth sub-dimension. We look at the legislative simplification and all the different steps the government do in uh, order to organize this activity or reviewing the law, uh, assessing the impact on new regulation, for example, by using uh, analysis the impact of regulatory, and uh, conducting uh, actions in specific area for simplifying the regulation. That is the general view of what's happened in terms of regulatory simplification. And then we go into specific area. One is uh, the uh, company registration process. And we have a number of indicators. We use uh, some indicator of performance from the doing business of the World Bank. But then we complement this with other indicators. For example, we ask if there is one stop shop, if uh, there is uh, one single company register, if it's possible to do company registration uh, online, how many are the uh, company registration number, and so on. And uh, by mixing up those data from the World Bank, the doing business, which are harmonized, and specific data, we get a better picture of what is going on. Very often we found that the data from the World Bank are generally good, but because they look at one specific type of company that is going to be registered, limited liability company, very often this type of registration procedure is not a general one. Because sometimes well, most of the company, particularly the new one, are not registered at limited liability. They have other legal form. And legal uh, limited liability registration is particularly complex. So the World Bank indicator clearly show the most complex form of registration. So we need to integrate it with other information in order to get a good picture. Then we, yes, uh, any question on this? Then we look at the, uh, another case that is uh, very relevant for SMEs, is uh, the ability to pay, uh, the facilitation in paying taxes. We are not looking at the tax level for SMEs. This is very difficult to assess because you have to do a study of the effective tax rate, not only the nominal tax rate, but we can uh, look at how much time, how many procedures you need to comply, you need to satisfy in order to pay taxes. And then also we can look if it's possible or not to pay taxes online. And we have a number of indicators. Some of them, they come again from the doing business of, of the World Bank. There is uh, one specific indicator that deals with uh, paying taxes with some sub indicators. We pick up some of them. And then uh, we uh, look at uh, this uh, gather information of, on the ability to pay taxes online. And then we look at other form of online interaction between government and SMEs uh, by having more possibility to interact online for SMEs is a significant save of time. Because SMEs usually, they don't have many people dedicated only to fill up forms. If they do this, they have to take people from productive activities. By facilitating this interaction with the government, there is a possibility to increase the productivity of the SMEs. The manager of the SMEs will do in something else more productive than simply government uh, filling government forms or queuing in uh, government offices. If it, there is a good system of uh, interaction through the net uh, with a different form of e-government, then it's possible to report, for example, taxes, uh, social security payment, pension payment, you can have access to public procurement information and so on. And that's what we look in this indicator. Any question on the previous dimension? On the next one is access to finance, which is a major one. And uh, it's quite difficult to access uh, because this uh, access to financing is a combination of several factors. Uh, one part is the regulatory uh, framework that the financial authority has established in the country. The other critical element is uh, the structure of the financial sector, the deepening of the financial market, and then uh, the demand that is expressed by the companies, and then the level of financial education in uh, 
the countries. And finally, also all the regulation that deals with bankruptcy and uh, companies in financial distress. So we try to cover this element as much as possible, at least to get a good understanding on how the, in the different components uh, play a role. And first we look at the regulatory framework and uh, we always ask if the government has done any kind of study or is basing its action on a, an assessment of what are the needs. Then we look at some element of financial regulations. We have uh, usually a number of questions that are simply informative, they are not scored. And then we have a number of questions that instead are scored. What is also very important, particularly for standard bank lending, is uh, the uh, presence of a register, a register for real estate assets. Most of the credits to companies are backed by real estate guarantees. So if you have a proper register of real estate assets, a cadaster in place and well functioning, it's much easier for banks to get information about the collateral. And uh, that reduce the transaction cost. But also we look at uh, the uh, presence of register for non-tangible assets and movable assets. Particularly movable assets are quite important because very often SMEs have more movable than fixed assets. They have, for example, inventories, they have uh, vehicles, they have some type of machinery that can be moved around. So the presence of these movable assets facilitate the, uh, the uh, allocation on loans. And then we look at the, the traditional uh, credit uh, coming from the banking sector. The majority of lending to SMEs come from uh, standard loans from the banking sector. So we look at some of the elements, in particular the possibility, uh, beside the different banking products, of uh, the presence of uh, credit guarantee schemes which in a certain way uh, balance the issue of uh, the request of guarantees and fixed asset guarantees uh, to back loans. Then we look at microfinance, which is very relevant, particularly for the microfinance sector. And then we look at uh, a number of alternative forms of financing, uh, particularly based on asset baked financing, like factoring, or for example, uh, the discounting, or inventory financing, and so on. And then we look at the financing of through equity. That's involved only a small part of SMEs, usually companies that already have a certain size. But equity capital is relevant, particularly for companies that are growing quite fast with high growth potential or companies that are in new sector and uh, in new technologies. Then we look at the uh, education, financial education and uh, the different elements that are related to financial education, understanding where are, they are the gaps, what kind of plans are, in present, are present, and how, how the information is spread about. And then we have this other uh, dimension that deals with uh, bankruptcy and uh, with uh, generally with uh, the, uh, all the action they are taking when a company gets into financial distress and the declaration of insolvency and so on. We found that uh, particularly there is a close relation between uh, this uh, legislation related to bankruptcy and financial distress and creditor riot rights with uh, the, uh, the level of uh, collateral requirement. Weaker are the legislation that allow banks to get access to the collateral Higher usually is the collateral, requir collateral requirement, and more costly is financing for SMEs. Then uh, we have another dimension, dimension four, that deals uh, with uh, the uh, services uh, for enterprises, and we have uh, divided in through three sub-dimensions. The first are the typical uh, business development services, and there is all uh, the range of services that can be provided. The second one is uh, instead uh, the services not to the enterprises but to, to the entrepreneurs and really covers mostly the startup phase or the pre-startup phase including uh, all the training and information to new entrepreneurs. 
And then we have inserted here, it doesn't really make much sense with the rest, but we have a, a part that deals with uh, the public procurement and how public procurement can be used in order to support the SME sector. So all the issues concerning the information on public procurement uh, bids and uh, tenders and uh, as well as the accessibility for SMEs and the procedures uh, that SMEs has to go through. The other, the following dimension is that covers innovation and, te and technology. And uh, here we have uh, three blocks. The first, we look at uh, the institutional framework, similarly to what we have done in dimension one, but here specifically for innovation and technology. This because many countries have a specific technology innovation strategy, which cover all types of enterprises. Here we are looking at the presence of this innovation strategy, but also if this innovation strategy has a particular emphasis or has a section that covers SMEs. But that doesn't happen all the time. Very often these innovation strategies or technology approach cover mostly the larger enterprises or purely research activities. Then we look at the kind of services similar to the business development services, but here specifically oriented in supporting innovative activities in SMEs. And uh, there are a number of uh, uh, indicators about this, including looking both of the services that provide assistance and those that provide financial assistance, technical and financial assistance. And, uh, and here, specifically, we have uh, this part that covers the financial assistance for uh, innovation. And uh, looking first uh, at the company that are innovative and uh, have high growth potential. These are a specific target in the SME population. And uh, usually, there are specific uh, type of uh, tools that are designed for this type of companies. And then we look at the other type of uh, uh, tools that are available for the entire population, uh, both from the fiscal side as well as uh, the financing scheme supporting uh, innovation and, uh, uh, the, uh, and, technolo and technological upgrading. Then specifically for the Latin American SME policy index, but we have not done for the other countries, for the other regions, we have uh, one uh, uh, section that deals with uh, productive transformation. And uh, here we have three blocks. One that deals with uh, the productive, uh, uh, all the activity that uh, are directed at improving the productivity at the level of enterprises. And uh, we look both if there are specific plans or strategy on this, if there are programs, and if uh, the government is actually uh, using a uh, uh, key performance indicator in order to follow up and monitor what's happening in terms of productivity improvement. And then uh, we look at the political, the policy for productive agglomeration. This is a general terms that include different forms of productive agglomeration, starting from uh, the uh, industrial park, the industrial zones, the free zones, or the export processing zones, we also uh, look at uh, the incubators, and, uh, and then uh, we look at the different uh, action that they are taking in uh, this area. And then we have a final part that deals with the integration with the value chains, and particularly the relation between uh, SMEs and larger enterprises. All the action the government is doing in helping SMEs, we are talking about small and medium-sized enterprises, more than micro enterprises, in interacting as suppliers uh, to larger companies. And uh, those actions usually are in terms of improving the management, helping this company to achieve certain quality or management standards, which are required by this larger company to start a relation with this. And sometimes this type of policy are conducting in association with the larger enterprises. Uh, so we have a uh, this uh, part was subject to quite a lot of discussion for Latin America, where we have a situation where uh, this interaction between the larger enterprises and smaller enterprises 
is much lower than in other regions. Uh, partly because the type of investment that is prevalent in many of these countries is mostly in the primary sector, in commodities and in mining, which has less opportunity than the industrial sector for interacting in, uh, in value chains. We had similar discussion in uh, Asia, and uh, in Asia, most of the agencies that are working on SMEs are concentrating their effort in this activity, in integrating the SME sector, particularly the small and the medium-sized enterprises, into the value chains. But what do you have in Asia is high presence of value chains and a lot of foreign direct investment. In fact, the economic in integration in uh, the ASEAN area in Southeast Asia is done through foreign direct investment and through the manufacturing activity. For example, Thailand has a very big uh, automotive production sector with many Japanese investment that produce cars in, and trucks in Thailand. And Thailand is one of the largest exporters in the world of cars. And uh, this investment has started to spread in the region. So not only there are a lot of suppliers in uh, Thailand that are local companies that are producing components, uh, usually not the first tier component, but the second or the third tier component. There are about this company has started to invest in the nearby by countries, for example, in Laos or in Cambodia, where they transfer more labor-intensive activities. But the companies there, they are at the initial phase. So the ability to receive this type of investment is really related to the fact that you have uh, at least a base of SMEs that know how to deal with larger enterprises, that you have a financial sector that is able to finance this type of transaction, that you have a logistic system that facilitates the connectivity of the different plants. I say this is an area that in Latin America, I understand, is not as progressive as uh, in Asia, but it's worthwhile exploring because it's very difficult to have productive diversification without being integrated in some form of value chains. Uh, any question at, for the dimension that we have covered so far? Sí, te, tengo algunas preguntas con respecto, bueno, son genéricas quizás a todas, a todas las eh, dimensiones que se están poniendo. Eh, específicamente cuando uno ve las preguntas que son muy, muy específicas, que son información del sector financiero, eh, de cualquier otra parte, pero quizás eh, no se concentre, la, inf la, la información está dispersa en todas partes. Seguramente en algunos casos solo en la mente de algunas personas. En estos casos, ¿qué sucede? ¿Qué, qué, qué se ha hecho en le, con la experiencia de los países donde se ha aplicado? ¿Qué se ha hecho? Cuando tal vez tienes esas carencias de información. ¿Y cómo afectan eh, el, el índice, los valores del índice? Well, collecting uh, information on access to finance, as you say, is not easy. Uh, first, there is a problem of data. It's very difficult to understand the flow of uh, funds that goes from the banking sector, for example, to SMEs. That is also because the central banks normally don't monitor the uh, SME financing. They monitor loan according to the size, but they have very broad categories. So you don't know if the company that is borrowing is uh, an SME or is a larger company. So you can only start to get some information if you get help from the, bank, from the central bank and from the banking association. They may have some specific information about this. And very often it's still anecdotal, more than systematic. At the OECD, we have uh, our colleague from the Center for Entrepreneurship. They have developed a specific uh, uh, index they call a, a scoreboard for access to financing to SMEs. You can find these on internet. They have about 13 indicators. They cover different types of financing to SMEs. They have started to apply initially to SME, to OECD countries, but now they have more than 45 countries reporting this. Usually it's the central bank that report this information. And they have also developed a, a guidebook on how to uh, use this methodology. 
we could see if there are the basis here with the help of our colleagues, for example, to start to collect some indicator if it's not complex. Once we start the work more specifically, we can see if we can use some of these inside information about this and uh, get uh, more clarity. See? Access to finance is a really, for SMEs, a combination of several factors. The central bank attitude on the risky lending. Uh, if, uh, for example, reserve requirements are particularly high for loans which are not completely secure, and SMEs usually have a problem of providing security, uh, banks are reluctant to lend to companies for which they have to put aside 100% of the loan in terms of uh, reserves to the central bank. It's very costly for them. So they will try to do something else. They send uh, the large enterprises, government bonds, or mortgages present much lower level of risk and they have to put aside less reserve. Then there is all this cost of collecting the information about the SMEs. For a small loan, it's costly to do so. You have uh, SMEs very often, they don't have proper financial statement, you cannot believe them. And uh, you have to go into trying to dig the data themselves. Particularly when they are family business, you never know where the financing are, on the family side or on the company side, where are they are really the assets. All this, it's translating what the banking is called relationship banking. You have to build a relationship with your client. You have to know the client. You have to follow all the family story and so on. If for a very small loan, it's not worthwhile to do. And all those sort of things make uh, obstacles for SME financing, which are not that easy to solve. You need to intervene on several areas. You need to convince SMEs to keep proper financial statement, help them to do so, help them to manage the cash flow, making, help them to understand what are the difference between family financing and uh, uh, company financing, uh, the company finance, and so on. So, Well, the, the process in filling up the questionnaire, they usually uh, the country coordinator set up a specific group on SME financing and try to bring in the central bank into this type of activity and the banking association. And with their help, they try to fill up the questionnaire to make it short. Any other question before we move to the next one? which is access uh, to markets and internationalization of uh, SMEs. We have uh, one side, a program of supporting internationalization, and particularly export promotion. Many countries have uh, export promotion agencies, so we look at the presence of the agency, the strategy that is behind these activities, and the different programs they are conducting. Then we look at the, faci the uh, trade facilitation program, and uh, particularly all these indicators that tell us how of the procedure on uh, international trade, the transparency and uh, the simplification of this procedure. Then we look at the uh, e-commerce. And e-commerce for SME may be a, an interesting uh, opportunity because uh, by placing your product on this e-commerce platform, you have access to much larger market. But this has significant problem for SMEs. They have to manage the technology. They have to be able to satisfy the requirement of the platform. And they have to have the support of uh, both a payment system and a logistic system that support this type of trade. And then uh, the custom regulation should be designed in a way that allow trade uh, across country. A lot of the electronic commerce is within country, but there is also the opportunity to trade if you get access to a platform in the United States, you have access to a huge market. But you have to be able to then to serve the market in an uh, effective way. And uh, if you have a lot of barriers to do so, it becomes impossible and you only build up the abilities. Then we look at the quality standard and all the quality system, which for SMEs, particularly when access for a market is quite essential, quite relevant. 
and uh, all the service that government can provide in order to help SMEs to incorporate international standard. And then uh, we had a specific section on uh, the benefit from regional integration. And this was particularly designed upon the request of the Pacific Alliance, who is putting a lot of effort in developing a comprehensive market covering the Pacific Alliance. I don't know what is the situation concerning Central America and SICA, if you have an integrated market or you are in the process of developing this. And it depends on what is your situation. We can decide how to structure this last subdimension. And uh, these are basically a review of uh, the dimension that we cover. This is a very quick review. The next workshop, we will spend hours in each of the dimensions, and we start to look in detail of the indicator in case you decide to go on and adopt in this methodology. Pues muchas gracias Antonio por esta presentación de, del marco de evaluación que hemos desarrollado en el caso de, de esta primera aplicación del índice en América Latina. Ahora yo quiero continuar a esta discusión um, con, con ustedes sobre qué piensas sobre este marco de evaluación en su contexto de Centroamérica, si ustedes están de acuerdo con utilizar um, algunas partes o en total este marco de evaluación en su caso, o si ustedes piensan que hay algunos elementos importantes dentro de su, su contexto que faltamos dentro de este marco de evaluación y si, y si necesitamos desarrollar dimensiones o subdimensiones nuevas o necesitamos ajustar algunas cosas. Pues Antonio y yo queremos uh, proveer algunas observaciones, ideas um, para, para uh, empezar una discusión sobre el diseño de una marca de evaluación para este proyecto subregional dentro de, dentro de Centroamérica. Pues en el caso de esta primera aplicación y en el diseño de este marco de evaluación, como yo fui explicando anteriormente, fue un poco difícil para nosotros porque no era un documento como el Small Business Act o como los uh, principios de, de ASEAN en que podemos alinearnos para desarrollar el índice. Pues realmente um, fue a causa de esas horas de, horas de discusión con los países participantes, estos siete países, en que hemos desarrollado este marco de evaluación y este dimensiones y subdimensiones. Pero en el caso de Centroamérica es un poco diferente, ¿no? Ustedes realmente están trabajando para crear algunos uh, objetivos, uh, guidelines, para organizar y para promover política pública MIPIME a nivel regional dentro de Centroamérica. Y pues para nosotros es importante para reconocer esos esfuerzos y también para tratar de alinear cualquier aplicación del índice de política pública con estos esfuerzos, um, con, con el liderazgo de, de, de Sempromipe dentro de su región, que, que, que esos esfuerzos están alineados. Pues, um, Antonio y yo fuimos uh, revisando esta nueva estrategia regional desarrollada por uh, Sempromipe uh, sobre la articulación productiva. Pues, para nosotros, esta estrategia uh, regional fue, fue particularmente interesante porque creo que tiene una fuerte relación con este marco de evaluación que hemos desarrollado en el contexto de los otros siete países. Porque, como yo fui uh, explicando anteriormente, la cosa en que realmente podríamos a unificarnos en este contexto con los siete países fue ese interés en la articulación productiva y en para tener una herramienta para monitorear y para hacer este proceso de benchmarking de estos siete países en relación a este objetivo para movilizar el proceso del desarrollo de mi pymes para ayudar a estos esfuerzos a nivel nacional y subregional de, de articulación productiva dentro de los países. Pues um, es interesante para nosotros saber que esos esfuerzos y este interés también existen en el caso de Centroamérica y que ustedes también están pensando en cómo, qué es la relación entre el desarrollo de MIPIMES, entre política pública para ayudar a este proceso de desarrollo y los procesos de, producción, um, de, de articulación productiva. Pues para nosotros creemos que realmente el índice y el marco de evaluación que hemos uh, ya desarrollado en el contexto de esos otros siete países es una buena herramienta alineada a esa estrategia regional uh, en particular. 
Y pues para nosotros creo que primeramente, y uh, yo sé que hay cinco ejes de, de, de esta estrategia regional, pues en el caso del eje 2 de, de metodología armonizada, pues para nosotros creemos que realmente el proceso de solo hacer un una proyecto del índice realmente es algo que está contribuyendo a desarrollar y para establecer una metodología armonizada de evaluación entre los países uh, de Centroamérica en el caso del desarrollo de sus políticas uh, públicas MIPIME. Pues uh, creo que realmente el proyecto uh, en, en total está alineado con, con, con este eje de la estrategia. Y para nosotros también es claro que hay relaciones entre los otros ejes de la estrategia y algunas de las dimensiones ya establecidas en el marco de este otro proyecto. Pues tenemos una uh, subdimensión sobre institutional framework, sobre el marco de, um, institucional y es realmente esa alineada eje 1 de la estrategia sobre la gobernanza y la coordinación institucional. También ya tenemos una dimensión sobre uh, servicios de desarrollo para mi pymes y también para Public Procurement y este realmente tiene una, una fuerte relación con el eje 5 de la estrategia sobre infraestructura y servicios para los, la, las mi pymes. También ya tenemos una dimensión sobre la transformación productiva y este tiene una fuerte relación sobre ese eje 4 sobre inclusión de las mi pymes en cadenas de valor. Y uh, finalmente tenemos una uh, dimensión ya desarrollada sobre acceso a mercados y internacionalización. Y ese claramente tiene una buena relación con ese eje 3 sobre instrumentos de acceso a mercados. Pues realmente hay muchas uh, fuertes uh, relaciones en que podemos alinearnos con este uh, marco de evaluación que ya existe para los otros siete países. Y creo que también en los otros casos de uh, acceso a finanzas, de... Um, simplificación de, de, de procedimientos y también innovación y tecnología, creo que también eso realmente tiene una, una buena relación a esa idea de infraestructura y servicios a los MIPIMES, que eso es relacionado también que todos estos servicios de innovación, servicios para accesar finanzas y para simplificar um, los, los procedimientos también tienen una relación. Pues una idea para ustedes, y esta es una de las cosas que podemos discutir, es que realmente podemos uh, continuar con ese marco de evaluación y que, que ya existe y que ya hemos desarrollado. Si ustedes también queremos uh, continuar en ese enfoque de articulación productiva y para utilizar el índice como una herramienta en ese sentido. Pero yo sé de las uh, discusiones de ayer, fue muy uh, interesante y útil para nosotros. Y realmente después de la de, uh, presentación de Milton también, Antonio y yo fui discutiendo. Y ahora yo, uh, nosotros tenemos un mejor entendimiento que esta estrategia um, solo es un componente ¿no? de la estrategia regional, mi PYME, que siempre mi PYME tiene, que tiene mucho más áreas de enfoque también. Y, pues, y también, pues, uh, eso fue algún cosa interesante después de, de, de su presentación, y gracias por eso, porque para nosotros fue mucho más clara, okay, ¿qué es la estrategia o la política regional en general, mi PYME, en que siempre mi PYME está tratando de avanzar, y que esa idea de articulación productiva solo es un elemento, un elemento importante, pero solo un elemento de, de esta política regional en, uh, en, en general. Y también dentro de las presentaciones de ustedes fue muy interesante también para nosotros a, a, a observar y también a, a entender más completamente algunas cosas. Uh, una de nuestras observaciones es que ustedes um, han hablado sobre emprendimiento muchísimo más de los otros siete países. Y para nosotros parece que para ustedes esto realmente tiene una fuerte relación sobre, uh, en, en sus intervenciones Uh, relacionados al desarrollo de, de mi pymes también, que eso no es tan separado, pero es un poco más integrado en sus contextos. Y es interesante para nosotros observar esto, porque voy a regresar a este, a este mapa de las varias subdimensiones y dimensiones que hemos desarrollado en los um, otros contextos regionales. Y actualmente, en todas las otras regiones, 
um, tenemos una dimensión en que enfocamos en emprendimiento y también específicamente en emprendimiento en el caso de mujeres y en los uh, servicios específicos o contextos específicos de, de um, mujeres que están tratando de hacer uh, actividades en, uh, de, de um, emprendimiento. Y solo en el IPAC para América Latina no incluimos esa dimensión, pues tal vez en el contexto de Centroamérica es importante para reincluir esa dimensión y para desarrollar algunas uh, subdimensiones o indicadores específicamente en este tema. Otra cosa también que para nosotros fue interesante observar y, y entender ayer es que en muchas de las presentaciones también fue un enfoque ambiental y también un enfoque de género. Y dentro del contexto del IPAC, uh, IPALC, que hemos desarrollado para los otros siete países, uh, hemos discutido esas cosas, no es que eso no son importantes para esos países, pero ellos uh, han decidido para no enfocar en esos temas dentro de esta investigación, este proyecto de índice de políticas públicas. Pero en algunas de las otras regiones, let's see, uh, para... Sí, para, um, para la cosa de, de, de ambiente, SMEs en la Green Economy, actualmente tenemos dimensiones o subdimensiones sobre este tema en todas las otras regiones. Pues tenemos uh, algunos ejemplos en que podemos trabajar con ustedes y tal vez Antonio tiene más información sobre qué tipo de indicadores o subdimensiones hem, hemos incluido en el contexto de estas uh, otras uh, aplicaciones del índice en otras regiones para enfocar más en este, en este tema ambiental. Um, y la otra cosa interesante también y, uh, es que para nosotros pe pensamos uh, de, de sus presentaciones que realmente hay dos, um, hay dos enfoques realmente de sus intervenciones en uh, la área de MIPIMES. Hay un enfoque que realmente está relacionado a este, esta idea de articulación productiva, pero también hay intervenciones que son más sociales ¿no? y que son más orientados a esta cohesión social de, de, de la sociedad y el rol de, mi, que, de, de, de mi pymes en este, en este proceso. Y también en el caso de ASEAN, tenemos este enfoque de social and inclusive enterprises, pues en, en, en negocios sociales inclusivos. Y también el rol de, 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 de mi pymes en este proceso, porque yo sé que esta, tal vez este proceso de producción art, uh, uh, articulación productiva no es el más inclusivo, no es el, la, la intervención más social o orientada a esas cosas, y eso es algo diferente. Y sí, también eso es algo central a sus intervenciones en el área de política pública MIPIME, también podemos um, uh, desarrollar una dimensión o subdimensión para, para enfocar y para medir a, a, a esos esfuerzos. Pues, solo algunas ideas uh, para empezar la discusión y para nosotros es muy importante para oír de ustedes ahora, ¿qué piensas? Es que ustedes uh, quieren uh, seguir uh, como los otros siete países para realmente enfocar en esta idea de articulación productiva y seguir con esas siete, uh, siete dimensiones y las uh, correspondientes subdimensiones que ya hemos desarrollado. O hay algunas otras uh, dimensiones, temas en que ustedes quieren también uh, enfocar o incluir. O es algo más, uh, no sé, complejo en que hay algunas cosas más que quieren uh, incluir, hay algunas cosas que ya existen que quieres eliminar. Realmente nosotros estamos abiertos a tener la discusión y en seguimiento de esta información, cuando o si uh, recibimos un mandato de ustedes para realmente poner en marcha un proyecto y, uh, y, y en un próximo taller, nuestro trabajo entre de este taller y un próximo es para actualmente um, desarrollar el cuestionario en completo y utilizando esta información. Pues si ustedes nos uh, informaron que sí si queremos desarrollar otra dimensión en este tema, nosotros vamos a trabajar en eso para, presentarle a ustedes, para presentarlo a ustedes al próximo taller y para tener esta discusión mucho más detallada de todos los indicadores propuestos antes de realmente lanzar um, algún proceso de, de investigación. Pues yo sé que es antes del, del almuerzo, creo que tenemos 30 minutos o algo para, para discutir este tema, para tener una idea de en qué dimensiones queremos enfocar en este contexto subregional y con esta información podemos continuar para actualmente desarrollar el cuestionario y todas las cosas específicas para la investigación. Pues 
para nosotros sería mejor si tenemos comentarios de todos los países en, uh, en qué, son sus, qué, qué están sus, uh, sus opiniones ahora en, en, en este tema.